that we honor our tradition of 80 years by always looking forward. So we're very glad to be here tonight with some really distinguished IBM scientists to speculate on the future. We like nothing better than trying to look in the crystal ball. I think we're going to see embedded technologies. What I mean by embedded, I mean uh, both uh, synthetic biological and non-biologic technologies which we carry in our bodies. I don't think we're very far away from it. I think we're going to want it and it's going to prove to be very useful. Well, there's work going on today in photosynthesis um, in, in understanding the mechanisms, the chemical and biology mechanisms of photosynthesis and applying it to solar cells. Right, so how can we take how plants derive energy from the sun, take that knowledge, replicate it in the lab, and create artificial systems that would actually help us create much more efficient solar cells, right, which will help us in one phase of energy. And here's how this changes 2050. Unlike Minority Port, where Tom Cruise is like pushing the images around and looking for stuff, yeah, I don't have to look. That's so old school. Collective intelligence will locate what you need, and it tells you. Did you know that a Mini Cooper has got more computer power than Apollo 13 had? And you remember Apollo 13? It almost got Tom Hanks killed, as I recall, didn't it? <laughs> We're holding this event at the USC School of Cinematic Arts because we believe that we have much to learn from IBM Research, and that IBM Research has much to learn from the creative community, so well represented here tonight. So we're here with uh, Michael Reisman. Reisman, actually. Take two, let's roll, roll it back. Let me ask you something, as a screenwriter, Hollywood screenwriter. Um, when you say Hollywood screenwriter, does that mean sellout? Is there any other way to interpret that? Does that mean hack loser? That's the implication, yes. Okay, good. Is it Reisman? Reisman. Like Reese's Pieces. Let's do this. What's your name? Hi, my name is Michael Reisman. Now listen, I want to ask you, we've been talking about uh, the year uh, 2050. Do you have, for the school, do you have the curriculum done yet? Uh, we always have the curriculum done. When you mention the year 2050, I think of in the year 2525 by Zager and Evans, and I think they foresaw our future really well. We could not get them for our IBM panel. People are coming up with schemes which look like they hold a chance of regenerating entire organs without going to stem cells. A colleague of mine, Professor Sam Stoop at uh, Northwestern University, has demonstrated with laboratory animals the reversal of paralysis, an absolutely extraordinary, extraordinary accomplishment. This gives me hope that through multiple learnings from nature, taking the applied knowledge of nature, the chemistry, the biology, implementing it in the lab. We're doing a lot of the designing. You can do some of the modeling in the lab with information technology, synthesize those materials. And the issue now over the next couple decades will be scaling it and making it affordable. In the year 2050, Michael, what innovation would you like to see come to fruition? Flying belts. So we can, not, not belts that fly on their own, but people who have belts that they can fly. Some sort of personal flying device. Jetpacks, you name it. Okay, but it would need to be an accessory, you're saying, versus like pants. There wasn't any of that uh, type of technology in the Austin Powers films, would you say? We had, uh, we had technology. Dr. Evil had a, a base on the moon and a hollowed out, you know, volcano. A submarine. A submarine, which was uh, an anthropomorphic submarine with feet paddles. Yeah, that was... That had which, by the way, was developed by IBM. You are the famous Kevin and Dan, is that correct? Yes. But We're brothers, actually. How are you really? doubting me right now. You're looking in my eyes and you're doubting me, but actually he's, he's my younger brother. Brothers. How long have you been brothers? But I think the future in that sense has already come here. People are walking around in their own bubbles a lot of the time. Um, I'm surprised more people aren't hit by cars when they're crossing the street because how can they hear what's going on? You know, there's no longer a communal space. There is a bunch of private spaces. As a libertarian, of course, I'm vastly in favor of that, but it looks awkward. What resonated with you the most, would you say, out of this panel? I think what was really interesting is the emphasis on biology, because certainly we've all seen what the emphasis on nano and DNA computing and the, the real look back into biology as opposed to sort of pure computational approaches. The possibilities that they were presenting were the most inspiring and the most exciting. They, they were just really opening up to not just the sort of scary unknowns of technology in the future, but also the, the great possibilities for creativity and advancement and, you know, great growth. 
this was a fantastic opportunity. Um, Hollywood politically tends to be very resistant to technology and science and see it as a negative, see only the, the bad things that can come of it. And this was an evening where we saw tons of positive things and the optimism that these people have for the future and the future of science, technology, and the human race is engaging and it's great. It is just, it's wonderful. And sane, beautiful, uh, just with more anger. Let's really? do it again with more anger. <laughs>